now mid-May and we're almost finished with spring planting in our Zone 5 garden. We're just waiting for it to warm up a bit before planting beans and transplanting tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, and sweet potato slips. If the weather forecast holds up, we should start planting those crops out next weekend. But I'll talk more about that later. Today I thought I'd give you a quick tour of the garden to show you how everything's coming along. I'll start with the strawberry patch, which is up front to your left, and I'll work my way around clockwise. We planted bare root tri-star strawberries in this bed at the end of April, and just two weeks later, the plants are doing great. Fortunately, all of the bare roots were viable, and the plants are well on their way. Tri-star strawberries produce in their first year, so we're looking forward to enjoying them later in the season. Now let's move north to the next bed on the west side of our garden. This bed is one of the sunniest spots in our garden. We'll be planting heat-loving sweet potatoes in a few weeks in this area, and probably next weekend we'll plant scarlet runner beans to climb a trellis that I'll install here. We'll also be growing kushaw squash and straight-eight cucumbers vertically in this bed. Both of these crops were directly sown in cold frames in mid-April. I'll remove the cold frames when the soil temperature is at least 70 degrees Fahrenheit on most days. In front of the vertical crops, we're growing music garlic, kale, collards, onions, and broccoli. The next bed to the north is one of our keyhole-shaped raised beds. We'll start by looking at the south side of the bed. We hope to plant tomatoes and pole beans at the bottom of these trellises next weekend. Though it's probably hard to tell from there, the rest of the bed is already mostly planted. In front of the trellises, we're growing purple kale that was started in March, and carrots, Swiss chard, and spinach that were started in early April with no protection. We're also growing elephant garlic, which struggled through the winter but is now doing better. As you can see, we laid one of our trellises flat on the bed. We did this to prevent squirrels and birds from digging up our seedlings. Directly behind the trellises were growing arugula that was planted without protection on March 12th, and carrots, beets, and turnips that were started under a cold frame at the same time. The cold frame was removed on April 9th. Though these crops are directly behind where we'll grow vertical crops, shading won't be an issue because they'll be harvested before the vertical crops are tall enough to cast much of a shadow. The north side of this keyhole-shaped raised bed is already completely planted. We have potatoes, beets, carrots, lettuce, spinach, parsnips, and more. All of these crops, except potatoes, were started under a low tunnel in early March. The low tunnel was removed on April 9th, which is the same day we planted these purple Viking potatoes. The next step on our tour is the blueberry bed. We planted three plants two years ago and hope to get our first harvest this year. We also have some June-bearing strawberries growing in front of the bed and some tri-star strawberries in it. Next we have an experiment that appears to be going very well. I planted Yukon Gold and Norland Red Potatoes in this compost bin under cover back in March and the plants are well over a foot tall and I've already started hilling them up with leaves and comfrey. It's not necessarily a good idea to plant potatoes in unfinished compost, so please see this link to see how I did it in a way that should get good results. Right next to the potatoes, the sunchokes are starting to take off. Sunchokes are a type of sunflower that has edible tubers. These plants will grow to be about 12 feet tall and tubers will be ready to harvest after our first frost this autumn. If you watch my videos over the winter, you're already very familiar with our hoop house. Now that it's spring and the top is off, man, these plants are growing like crazy. There are crops at every stage of development here. There are seedlings, crops that are ready to harvest, and others that are going to seed. This relatively small area provides abundant daily harvests of greens. And the great thing about it is that almost all of the plants in the bed are perennials or self sowing annuals, so we do very little planting, just a lot of harvesting. We're now heading back south on the other side of the garden, and this first bed has nothing but self sowing annuals and edible perennials. Perennials include sea kale, good king henry, french sorrel, and sylvetta arugula. And self sowing annuals include claytonia, mosh, and mustard greens. Now let's move to the next bed to the south. The plants in this bed were started in early March under a polytunnel, and they're really starting to take off now. 
We've been harvesting radishes from this bed for weeks. The sugar snap peas are making their way up the trellis. And we'll start harvesting kale and spinach soon. Now let's see what's growing in the north side of our second keyhole bed. Next weekend I'll install a trellis right here and plant tomatoes and pole beans. In addition to that, we already have a lot of other crops growing in this bed, including music garlic, bok choy, dinosaur kale, purple kale, and carrots. Next weekend, we'll also plant tomatoes on a trellis right here. And we don't have to worry about the tomatoes shading out these crops because the turnips, rutabagas, carrots, and beets that are here should be harvested before the tomatoes are very tall. And in front of the trellis, we're growing zucchini that was started in a cold frame in mid-April. We'll keep the cold frame in place until nighttime temps are in the 60s. Of course, we'll vent the top to keep the plant from getting too hot. Other crops we're growing in the bed include music, garlic, kale, cauliflower, and onions. Now let's take a look at what's growing along the fence on the east side of the yard. Here we're growing perennials including honeyberries, lovage, French sorrel, and blackberries. We also planted rhubarb here a few weeks ago. In addition, there are a number of annuals growing such as red orc, mustard greens, beets, and collards. And the last stop on today's tour is this bed of purple passion asparagus which at the moment doesn't look like much because I've already eaten every spear except the very spindly ones. There's nothing quite like fresh asparagus eaten raw from the garden. Before closing, I'd like to say a word about our tomatoes. We've been hardening them off now for well over a week, but I'm waiting for nighttime temperatures to be mostly above 50 degrees Fahrenheit before putting them in the ground. This weekend, we're looking for a low of 39 degrees, so I'm glad that I've been cautious so far. In fact, we'll have a number of cool nights coming up and on all those nights, I plan to bring the tomatoes into the house. By next weekend, we're hoping for warm enough temperatures to transplant our tomatoes. I hope you enjoyed this look at the One Yard Revolution Garden in mid-May. For a more detailed look at what we've planted and when we planted it, please see the link to this document in the description below. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time. <music>